this advertisement for the following story. Remember Auntie Cleo? Because she remembers you. When you were sick, who took your temperature? When you were hungry, who gave you a needle full of blood? A needle full Auntie of Cleo, love. Auntie Cleo, that's who. <laughs> Have you given your auntie a hug today? This has been Halcyon News, your only source for news in the Halcyon Commons. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Have you been given a needle full of love lately? <laughs> if you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a touch late. My engineer is looking to do some deep cleansing. Wants to impress Chief Junlei. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush <laughs> Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs, for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished shit? Um, hmm. An engineer might like refurbished ship. <laughs> you got a preference, Pavati? Oh, gosh. I never talked about what kind of smells she likes. I think pretty much every spot on Groundbreaker just smells like old socks. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering... I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious like, I'd probably go with rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and cinnamon. I guess you could eeny miny mo it. Take your time, dear. A lady scent says a lot about her. <laughs> well, let's go with mock apple. Captain. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Gladys. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. More ammunition! Let's see here. Two rounds of you, two rounds of you. And then 50 rounds here, 50 rounds there. And another 50 rounds. <coughs> you ready to get cleaned up, Pavati? Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy, Kabir. There's your soap, buddy. Thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dust back casserole. Saltuna and Xeno Gold needle mushrooms. And then for needle dessert, mushrooms? there's a thing called uh what? sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. Uh, there's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. All right, we'll figure it out. Thanks, Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. Yeah, of course. It'll it'll all be worth it. But first, friendships do. Ah, oh, there he is. The lost hope. Hey, Rosanna. You mind trying to have a moment here? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I'm looking for a guy by the name of Rufus Trask. I'm told he lived around here. 
Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. If you know where Trask is, you want to tell me. <laughs> well, that's Harlow's mark, no mistake. Guess he's not letting this one go. I don't want any manner of harm befalling Rufus. Not on my account. Uh... I'm not going to lay a finger on Trask. Promise. We're not? Oh, right, yeah. We're non-violent sorts. Real diplomatic. All right, you made your point. <laughs> Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Cute Bay. to all the times I've resorted to uh, as much as violent know. tendencies. <laughs> I'm obliged. Thank you. Let's go kill him. <laughs> it's okay, I won't lay a finger on him. Just several heavy ammunition bullets. Heavy caliber bullets, rather. <laughs> oh, uh, my finger? Yeah, it, it wasn't on him. It was on the trigger of my heavy machine gun. <laughs> oh, fuck. Are you kidding me? Oh, no. I didn't even start. The, the timer stopped. Oh, no. Um, I don't know when, uh, when to stop this episode. Fuck. I'll have to, I'll have to wing it. Editing, please help me out here. Uh, I was wondering why my timer, timer was stuck on, uh, 19 minutes, 59 seconds remaining. <laughs> Yeek. Alright, we'll go for, I don't know. We'll go for seven more minutes. How about that? I hope that's a long enough duration. Some crew members are causing a disturbance on the ship. Is that so? You're adjusting before you pull. You're anticipating. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. What if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. You want to lean into it. Embrace it. Work with it. You're in control here, Parvati, not the gun. Don't let a hunk of metal jerk you around. You've been around powerful machinery all your life. And you're always in control, right? I guess that's kind of like when the filler's shooting 600 cans of near molten sal tuna down the conveyor while I'm trying to tune a bell. Here, stand like me. Just so. Hips square. Lean forward a little. Just equipment, and you're just an engineer using it. Okay. We'll try again later. You'll get it. I promise. You'll get it, Pavati. Hey, Cap. You getting along with the crew? Well, Sam's been doing my dishes for me, so that's something. It seems genuinely happy to do that. Can an auto mechanical be happy? Opal told me they could once. She believed auto mechanicals feel just like we do. She would always... Shit. Look at me dredging up bygone days. Forget I said anything. No, no, it's alright. I will. How you doing, Pavati? I could probably spend years fixing this boat. Stem to stern. Did you learn your trade from your father? Mostly, yeah. <coughs> I lived in the maintenance office in here all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. Reed seemed to have it in for you. <laughs> I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like you wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. 
When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. <laughs> You're actually good at it, and you enjoy it, though. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up, see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Did you move straight back to Edgewater? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big old hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Did you get much time with him after you got back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Take your time, lass. <coughs> Hey, yes, Sam. Sanitizing within established radius. All right, let's get to the next place. Turret two. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. Perfect. Uh, let me go talk to the crew real quick. Hey, Felix. We still going after Trask, boss? Yes, we are. Something about this feels strange. Are you sure you trust this guy? I know, I know. Clyde comes off rougher than Mantis or Hyde. He's a good guy, though. Just gotta get to know him. Mm, I'll take your word for it. I think you're being too forgiving of the guy who abandoned you without a word. Yeah, I'm still not over that. You'd think a grown man would know how to let go of his past. But I guess I'm just not there yet. That's not something you just get over. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Walking out on a kid when you're pretty much the only friend he's got? That's pretty damn low. Maybe we should go have a word with Trask. Get to the bottom of all this. Aye, aye. Hey, Vicar. Where are you at, buddy? Mm, he's not in there. Ah, oh, there you are. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? I'm about to go kill someone. You want in? <laughs> During the experience at the Hermits, you seem somewhat at odds with your mother. I wouldn't say my parents disowned me, strictly speaking. But before they died, they accused me of thoughtlessly abandoning them. I couldn't understand it. I was only trying to make them proud by becoming a better vessel for the plan, to feel the joy they felt. I was so certain my potential was wasted as a laborer and was willing to risk everything just to prove to them that they were wrong. I was lost, misguided. I wanted to ask you about that book. Does it have something to do with your religion? Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought. So the book is banned in this colony. Uh, what's a philosophist? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, 
in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakono's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Hmm. Uh, Vicar searching for a banned book sets a bad example, doesn't it? <clears throat> the story of my life. Most lay people are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worse idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's how I ended up assigned prison duty, where I was fool enough to let an inmate bend my ear with stories of an original Bokonu journal. Hmm. That's enough of name, right? And with that, I want to thank everyone for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. And in the next episode, we're going to find Trask. Choose. Uh, definitely Felix. And...